Hello, welcome to Slam Technologies. This is Dr. IT. Today, I'm going to walk you through how you can install your PFSense firewall. But without wasting time, let's get started. There are so many different paths in installing um, the PFSense, but I'm going to give you the simplest way. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to www.virtualbox.org. And so you'd let go, once you go to the virtual um, box.org, virtualbox.org, you will look for downloads here on the left side. And once you click the download, you are going to click the Windows if you're using the Windows operating system to do the installation. We can do the OS X and then the Solaris and whichever operating system that you are using. Now, I do have mine already and downloaded, so there is no need for me to reload it again. And then if you do not have the PFSense, you will go to the PFSense, um, you know, and then you can just go to um, the community or, and then once you are here, you will look for downloads. In a download, if you're using the, um, the ISO, select the, from the top here, AMD 64 bits. And then down here, you can select the DVD image installer. And so for this one, um, the, the state um, or the country, if yours is selected, if yours is not, that's fine. Go ahead and just select which is the nearest to you. For me, it's the text US. And so I select US, click download. I already have this download, so there's no need for me to do that. After you've downloaded, you need to um, have a zip extractor. And so you can go into your download folder. And then in the download folder, you will see the installation over here. You will right click on this one, and then you're going to zip the file to, um, to a, a folder. So what I did, was I created a folder on my desktop called PFSense. And when I went in, I zipped that files in here. And so that's, um, you know, that's it for downloading the PFSense and downloading the, the virtual box. Once you have the virtual box open, you are going to create a new instance. So let's watch me do that, right? So I type the name PFSense. And then at the bottom here, at the type, I'm selecting BSD. And then at the version, since my Windows is 64-bit, um, you select the preferably your Windows. I'm selecting the free BSD 64 bits. I'll go to next. Then here, the memory, I think for me is too small because I'm going to use it for other installation. So I'll move it to the two gig, 2048. So I'll go ahead and click next. I click create and I'm going to go next. Everything is just like that. And then here, the default is 16 gig to begin with. I'm going to add some packages. So I want to make it roughly to 50 or 60 gigabytes. Now it depends on the memory that you have. If you don't have enough memory, don't try that. Now that I've done this one, I'm going to go ahead and start my settings. So PFSense is highlighted. I'm going to click settings. And then in the settings, I'm going to go to the network. I will change the network adapter to bridge adapter. Then I will do a second adapter. And then I will bridge that one as well. Now, the reason why I did this is that the PSNs is going to use adapter one as your one, your wide area network, and adapter two as your local area network. And so I'll go ahead and click on OK. I'll save that, and I'll go back to settings. And I'm going to select the storage. Now, because I've extracted the file into a folder, I can just go ahead and go and choose a DEX file, right? And then in the desktop, that is where I put the folder, PFSense folder, double click the PFSense, double click, double click, right? It's in, click OK, and then let's begin the installation. You click Start, and the installation begins. It takes a few moments to um, install the PFSense, um, you know, to complete the PFSense installation. So installation here have started. Let's hold on as we're going through the process. And this point, you need to 
read it carefully. I mean, whatever is presented to you has to be very straightforward, very fast, easy and stuff. So you have to definitely read it carefully, making sure you capture every part of this. So let's give it a moment. I'll be pausing the videos if I need to, um, so we can do that. But for here, I'm not going to do it because it's not that long. So let's continue to hold off. Okay, so in here, your mouse will not work. Remember, your mouse doesn't work. It's only the keyboard. So you hit enter to accept. Now I'm going to hit enter again to install PFSense. And then it's looking for the key map. I say, continue with default key maps. I hit enter. Now here it says the um, guided route on, you know, on this one. I will not do that. I'm going to select the bottom one that says the auto UFS or BIOS, right? I select this one and I say enter and then uh, installation begins. Very straightforward, simple. And then uh, this will continue in a few moments and then your firewall is ready. During this process, I may want to pause it um, so to save some time. So now that the installation is completed, you do not have to select yes. You have to hit enter for no, right? No is selected. So I press the key, um, enter on the no, and then um, you know it's going to move me to the next screen. And so, um, you know, when you hit the keyboard and it says capture, you say no. So over here, I'm going to select the option for, uh, the option to remove the, uh, to unmount the ISO from the system. So I'll go back to settings here, and then I'll go into storage and I'll select PFSense and I just click the blue icon here, remove this from the virtual drive, this unmounts it. Now, if you look down here, if I did the reboot, you will see that it's going to give me all errors, right? And so I hit enter on reboot and then everything is going to show error. And so, um, you know, I'll go ahead and then um, close this whilst it's trying to do its own thing. I just power off the machine and then um, I'll go ahead and go to make sure PFSense is highlighted. Go to file. Then you go to reset all warnings. <clears throat> Once you reset all warnings, you can go ahead and click start again. Now the PFSense should come up with, um, you know, with uh, one and then the LAN IP addressing. And so whilst it's coming up, let me just go ahead and just um, make the screen a little bigger here so you can see. And then um, it will give us everything. Now, once it's booting, what you need to do is you need to have an operating system start as well. So I have my, <clears throat> I have my virtual box here, which will open to Windows 10, right? Which will open to Windows 10. Now, um, anytime that the system um, you know, anytime that you are trying to add the package manager and it's not doing, you have to um, check for the update. And I will show you what I mean by this. And so, um, you know, what I have done is I have the Windows 10 also installed already. So if you don't have it installed, make sure you have the Windows 10 added to your virtual machine or your virtual box. Uh, if you have the Windows 10 or you have the server, <clears throat> you can use that operating system to do that. Or maybe another machine sitting elsewhere inside your house can, can adapt to that particular network. And so, um, you know, just watch me um, doing that. It may take a few moments and then I'll be there. So here, um, the system is completely booted. And now you see that I have an IP address. This is my home IP. And then this is my um you know my lan so this the one is my router ip address and then the, the one is my router ip and then the lan is the pfsense so i want to change the ip address why do i have to change it you only will change it if your ip conflicts with this if you are using if your lan your one sorry your one here is 192.168.1.1 
then you definitely will know that this may be a conflict <clears throat> of your home network. And to change the IP address, <clears throat> let me change it from the default. Default is 192.168.1.1. I'm going to change it. So I'll select um, number two, right? Um, you know, I have to put my num locks on. So um, I'll press number two, then you hit enter. Then it asks me, um, you know, <clears throat> available interfaces. So I want to change the one, the LAN, which is number two here. So I press two, hit enter. And then it says, enter the LAN IP address that you want to use. So I'm going to just create anything, um, you know, for the purpose of, um, you know, giving it any private IP. This is the um, classless interdomain routing, the CIDR um, notation. And so I'm going to do um, the class three, which is 24, right? If you want to do any other subnet, it's up to you. But here I do 20, um, 24. 24 here gives me 255255255.0. So hit enter. And then um, in here it says, um, you know, for LAN, press enter for NAN. So I'm setting the LAN. So I hit enter for NAN and then enter the LAN IP version six. Press enter for NAN. I'm not doing IP version six, I'm doing IP version four. So I hit enter. And then do you want to make it a DHCP? Of course, yes, I press enter. And then I'm going to put the IP address. So this is going to be the entire IP. So 140.10.1.1. And then it's going to ask me to enter the end address of the IP version four client. So it's going to be 140.10.1.1. Dot 253. That means um, from one to 253, that is what I want to use. And here, I don't want to revert HTTP to the web configuration. Um, and so I'm going to select no, and I hit enter. And now, um, you know, everything is set. Now, whilst this is done, I hit enter. And so my gateway now is 140.10.1.1. I'm going to open the Windows 10. Why do you think I have to open it at the latter end of this? The reason why I did this is so that my Windows here can receive a DHCP address from the server, from the um, firewall, right? If I open the Windows first, then the Windows, I have to refresh it before it can adjust itself to the PFSYNC, but this is how you do it. Open, in, install or open the firewall, the PFSYNC first, then you can add the windows. You can open the windows. Always do it that way. If you open, if the firewall is up first, then the windows is the second. Then the windows, the firewall can distribute an IP address to the window. You got it? Make it easy on your side. All right. So I'm going to just put it whilst this is opening up. And so I'm going to pause for anything, you know. So um, I don't want this, um, all this junk thing to go in. So let's pause for a moment. So Windows has opened for me and the system is asking me to select yes or no to, um, you know, allowing um, the home network um, onto my virtual machine. So I have um, selected yes, and then I hit enter and therefore it has accepted it. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and then open the browser I'm using Microsoft Edge. You probably want to use the um, browser of your choice, right? And so in here, I'm going to um, type the IP address, right? 140, um, you know, it's very important. And so I'm going to type the IP 140, let me just do it, 140.10.1.1. And then I hit enter. And this will now connect me to the PFSense. Click details. At the bottom, you see go to the web page. I click go to the web page. And then the username is admin. And then the password is PFSense, right? PFSense. And so I enter this one, it opens the site for me. And so here I'm at the PFSense and the system takes me through to the setup wizard. So I just click next and then next. I'm not changing anything, just, um, you know, I can um, get, give it a host name or domain name, you know, but just keep it as this for the purpose of training. And then the time server, you can just keep it like that. On a time zone too, 
um, you know, um, it should conform to your standard time. If not, you have to select your time zone. I'm in America, so um, I can just do America, New York time. And so when I go to the America, New York, I surely will be able to um, select um, my local time and then, um, you know, and then it will adjust. I mean, it's the same time that I am right now, the ETC time, the Eastern Standard Time. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very straightforward. So here is America, New York, right? And then I can just go to next. And like I said, in the time server will not change. I made the DHCP, so it's already selected. And then the subnet that I selected is slash 24. And so, um, you know, pretty much everything should be fine here. I'm going to show you the subnet portion that I'm talking about. So this is the IP that I did, and then this is the subnet, right? And so I'm running both um, the subnet. And here is where it asks you to change the password, but um, I will just leave it just like that. Okay, the moment of truth is here. Um, you know, the site has completely loaded. And then I'm going to now um, check for update. So it's the best thing to do. You click check for update. And if there is any update, the system will check it out for you. And then, um, you know, when you finish, you click finish and then, um, you know, you move away. And so um, to install packages, right? Um, you know, that is the, the way to install the system. And then to install packages, you always have to make sure that your system is up to date. And so um, if the system is not up to date, packages will not run. You got it? And so packages will not run. And so you make sure that um, if you have an old um, system, you go up to the systems here, right? You go to the update and then you will see the old one will say um, deprecated. This is the latest and the system is trying to retrieve some of these things for me, which I mean is the latest. So what else you know, do you want? Every here and then you need to check updates on your systems and that is very important. So on this point, I'm going to select the um, package manager from here. And then once I select the package manager, you see that the packages will be available, click the available package. And now I can go ahead and select which package I want to install. Let's go ahead and say, if I want to do the, um, you know, the PF blocker NG. You see the PF blocker NG has, um, you know, 3.1.0.4. I select this one and then I confirm the, my selection and then um, the installation or the download will begin momentarily. And that is um, in theory, um, what, um, you have to do whenever packages are not being installed on your system. So install the snort and then any other package that your instructor will request you to do or that you will, be, uh, you, you will utilize it in your environment because um, it's very important <clears throat> to kind of, um, you know, get the right information or what you want to use it in your environment. I hope this has been informative to you. I thank you for choosing Slam Technologies. Have yourself a wonderful day.